Hi everybody, just a quick video today. I wanted to show you something I've been working on because I alluded to it in my previous video and it's this. So I wanted to make this video so that I could answer any questions that you may have, or at least preempt some of them. So yes, I'm working on something that uh, I'm going to show you the back. I've got another one which you can see, this is the PCB, called the Retro uh, Enablement Project, Mother Brain Retro Enablement Project, and this is the Inspiration Engine. So if you've seen the RetroNet V3 or now the up version the V4 that's coming out, you'll see this Mother Brain Retro Enablement Project logos on things. So these are my gadgets to enable you to use retro things or, or do retro activities. Okay, you got that, you got it. And this is the Inspiration Engine. And the Inspiration Engine started off as a, a design because I absolutely love pocket computers. So if you remember back in the 80s, you used to have these pocket computers by Casio and Radio Shack and all these different people, and I never got one. You know, and it used to run basic. So it's the idea of that. I wanted something that was in my pocket that when I'm on the move, I can tinker with, do all sorts of things with. And uh, this is based on a dual-core ESP32 with Wi-Fi and I think it's got BLE. Um, not for audio, but it's more for peripherals, Bluetooth. Um, it has a SD card interface, a 32-bit DAC. It's got good sound output, 32-bit DAC. It's got battery charging uh, capability. It's designed to be running off batteries, actually. And uh, obviously the OLED screen. It's a spy interface on the screen, so you can use different screens. You don't have to use this. You could actually even run a second screen, you know, like make a clamshell or whatever you want if you're going to make your pocket. Now, this is a development board, so I've been working on it. So you will see a few bodge mods on there. Some of those are permanent. Some are temporary just for testing. Um, you can see here. Yeah, they're quite neat, though. I could just hide them under the screen. You'd never know, but they're there. You know, that's what happens when you're doing these things. You have a keyboard interface here that's running through an I2C port expander, which does allow you to have also an Atari joystick type interface. So you will be able to run this with a standard joystick, hopefully. I've not tested that part. Um, this module is the wrong module, this one with an external antenna, but you can see I've footprinted it for the internal antenna here, that's how it should be. But Wi-Fi is working great. In fact, I've been working with some of the chaps on Discord, uh, Chrissy and Andrew Beer, and you'll see their names down below because they're obviously patrons as well, and they've been really helping me out on this massively, um, especially Andrew. He has uh, really helped getting all these things working. So we've tested out the SD card is working pretty great. The audio DAC is working great. The keyboard is working great. It's all working great. So that's all the peripherals. Uh, something we've had to do is modify these slightly. So th there's a downside to that because this is designed to be able to be compatible with the Aetherfruit Feather, but I'm not sure whether or not how compatible we're going to be with that by the end of this. So we might only be compatible with our own upgrades, but that's fine too. Um, so there's already been talk of making a VGA adapter card or a composite card to go on here. So if you're going to not run it in a portable configuration, but you're going to run it in a box that you could make a little computer or shove it into your ZX Spectrum that doesn't work anymore. Um, today I'm going to actually just solder this battery on because that's something I've been meaning to do. Um, it has already been tested. I just don't have one of the right connector, but I do have battery terminals here. Uh, it does charge up. It holds just like a it's like a mobile phone. It, it uh, the charge light will come on, and then the charge light goes off when it's ready. At the moment, we have these uh, tack switches. I may or may not change that. I might make a, a header and have a matrix keyboard, or maybe an adhesive one, so you could stick that onto your 3D printed enclosure. I'm really unsure about that, but this is a V1, and we have loads of V1 PCBs, you know, if anyone wants to make one. So just some ideas, while I'm distracted, my soldering eyes warming up, some ideas for uh, operating on these things. Of course, the, the screen, I've got it on a header right now, but in the uh, you know, that's only for development. It's actually meant to be soldered straight on, so it sits pretty flat. You can see it's kicking up quite a bit now, but that would be sitting flat. So if you 3D print the enclosure, it should fit in your pocket. A little bit of a bulge on the back, depending on where you want to put the battery. Uh, I wouldn't advise putting it on these <laughs> unless you sand those down. You want to punch your battery. But yeah, some ideas of this. I, I like the idea of putting the RetroNet uh, command interpreter on it as an initial operating system so that you can use it for probing and interfacing with I2C and spy buses and things. You could use it as a war driving rig. Of course, it does have full Wi-Fi capabilities. So you could uh, use it for scanning Wi-Fi networks. You could run a web server on it. 
you could use it for controlling your Internet of Things devices. You can put emulators on it and actually you know, use it to emulate your favourite systems. There's, there's all manner of things, really. This is the whole point, you see. It's to inspire you to want to try all these different things. And hopefully, oh, there we go, the battery has worked and you can see the screen. And I want to show you something uh, Andrew was working on recently and it's really cool. So I'm just going to zoom right out so you can see. This is a pot noodle speaker. Um, it's a food, the food of the gods in the UK. It's, it's actually pretty awful, but I, we eat them, right? I like them. Uh, I'm going to turn that on and uh, I'm going to plug this in. I'm going to hold the push the reset button in. Now when I push the reset button you notice there's a little bit of a delay sometimes in the screen and what it's doing because it's running through in its firmware right now. It's got a whole uh, setup basically where it's testing the SD card interface, all the different interfaces. So it's not actually updating the screen. I haven't written the code to update the screen from the keyboard yet. It, this, it's not got an OS. But so it's basically booting into a mod player. So if you remember those from old days, uh, like Atari STs and Amigas, you had these mod players. And uh, that's what it's doing. So you can see on the screen, it does say Atari mod file right there. Oh, there you go. And you can hear it starting to play, and it's so cool. Now what I've noticed, I've turned the volume down, <laughs> what I've noticed from this though, we, we're getting a little bit of glitches on this, we're trying to make sure, because this is a 32-bit DAC, I don't think the mod player is quite, um, it's not right, it sounds like it's clocking its sample buffer, and so when you do that in the audio, because you're sending it an I squared S, the, the left channel, right channel, and then every now and then if it's clocking it over you see, you'll, you'll, it's almost like you're going from MSB to LSB and it will hear there's a pop or a click and we're sorting that out. That's definitely not a hardware issue, it's a software issue because we're just jamming, cutting and pasting and jamming everything on here. So there you go, that's the retro enablement product um, inspiration engine, that's what we're calling it. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign off now and wish you uh, all the best for your bank holiday. Uh, and I'm going to plug this into the camera and um, I'm going to play the whole song. So you can stop the video now or if you want to hear this groovy mp3 coming, sorry, mod file uh, uh, coming from here, you can listen to the whole thing. Also, in terms of audio, of course, you can stream mp3s and flax and do all these other stuff, but I kind of like the idea of a mod file as a starting place. Thanks for watching. Get the Wrangler! Okay! To do, to Atari! 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 Przepraszam pana, to jest Atari! Atari? To pan, ja nie jestem rolnikiem!